that uh, for the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education examination for 2018, we have a candidature of about 663,820. If we can have those graphics that uh, show the statistics of uh, uh, the KCSE exam 2018, there you have it on your screen, that we have 663,820 candidates. Of course, uh, the male candidates are 340,000 and the female candidates are 323,000. Uh, so you can see uh, a difference of about 17,000. Then for KCPE, we have uh, 1.06 million candidates. This must be the highest so far yes, uh, yes, since yes. Uh, free primary education began in the year 2003. The male candidates are 531,000 and the female candidates are 529,000. You can see they are almost achieving a gender parity in terms of mm. registered uh, candidates so far. Now let's look at uh, the program of how the students will be sitting this examination. And for the KCPE candidates, the rehearsal day is the 29th of October uh, when they will prepare to sit the examination that should be on a Monday and then the examination proper begins on the 30th up to the 1st of November. They have a total of seven papers to sit between uh, those within those three days. Then for the KCSC examination, uh, the practical examinations will be beginning sometimes next week, no, the week after next, uh, that is on 22nd of October until 1st of November and then the rehearsal day for the exam proper is on the 2nd of November and the written exams will be sat between 5th of November and 28th of November after which the uh, Form 4 candidates will be free to go home and celebrate to have finished their 844 uh, up to Form 4 level. Then after that we want to look at some of the instructions that will be guiding the candidates as they sit for the examination. Uh, if you're a parent, if you're a student and you're watching this these are the things that you must adhere to. First of all, there will be mandatory search outside the examination room. Uh, that is every morning that you present yourself before uh, an examination room, you must um, be checked. You must be searched to ensure that you do not have any foreign material that would aid you respond to questions. You must be seated 15 minutes before time and you must not be late for more than uh, 30 minutes. Should you be late, then you must explain to the supervisor before you can be allowed to sit that, that examination. Uh, then on, there are some prohibited items which uh, the learners, the candidates must not take into uh, the examination room, uh, including um, the programmable calculators because you might feed them uh, some information prior to sitting the examination. You must also not have cell phones. You must also not have electronic communication devices and the punishment. If you are found with any of these items in the examination room, then you will have your results cancelled even after you sit that exam. I want also to look at uh, some of the penalties that have been put by the Kenya National Examinations Council in preparation for this exam and they have already been sent to teachers and candidates in this exam that um, the, the examination center results will be cancelled should you uh, should irregularities widespread irregularities be found within a, an examination center and in instances that um, there is exam leakage that um, uh, people are able to access papers prior to sitting then you will face 10 years imprisonment or 2 million shilling fine or both should be found uh, found culpable rather and then the candidate impersonation will attract two years in prison or two million shilling uh, of uh, penalty or both should you be found guilty of that offense. Those are just some of the issues that, um, or rather the modalities and the measures that uh, the Examination Council and the Ministry of Education have taken to ensure uh, that uh, people adhere to this, uh, these issues. But first of all, I want to begin from the point of, uh, from the preparation point of view, and you've been interacting with the Ministry of Education officials, are you convinced that uh, as we approach the examination season of 2018, that uh, the Ministry has done what it needs to do to ensure that uh, the examination is first of all safe and also ensure that uh, candidates are able to go through the examination without any hindrances. Yes, uh, Sam, I want to say that uh, as, an, as a chair of an oversight committee, our responsibility is actually to, to task and ask the ministry if they are well prepared. And before even I make uh, my presentation, I want to make a, I want to send my condolences to the school, the Arabian high school students and teachers who were attacked by the Al-Shabaab and they lost their lives. Mm -hmm. We really feel for them. And, uh, unfortunate story. Yes, a very, very unfortunate thing. Mm -hmm. Last week, the minister, uh, this week actually, the ministry came before the committee and make very candid, very clear mm -hmm. uh, ways mm -hmm. on how they are prepared. Mm -hmm. And as a committee, because we are tasked with the oversighting them, they gave us in a very clear way mm -hmm. how they are prepared in terms of logistics, in terms of exam papers, in terms of uh, readiness in terms of each and everything mm -hmm. and uh, 
As a former teacher and as a chair of that committee, mm -hmm. I was very confident mm -hmm. that the CS and his team mm -hmm. are ready and they are ready to go. Mm -hmm. The agency, the Kenya National Examination Council, mm -hmm. is also a bit, mm -hmm. especially in terms of uh, uh, the, the officers, the training, and uh, the, 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 the containers. Yes. This year, because of widespread uh, distances, mm -hmm. they have added more about 40 containers because we had asked them a number of questions. Mm -hmm. One of it is actually about the, the distance between mm -hmm. the collection centers and the and examination schools. centers. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they had actually heeded mm -hmm. what we asked them to add more, and they added 40 more. I know there are certain areas which are actually far flung. Mm -hmm. We also asked them about their preparedness in terms of... Uh, vehicle and movement of exams, especially in far-flung areas and also in terms of uh, security. Mm -hmm. And they gave an assurance and I think uh, they, are very, they are working very closely, yes. especially with the Ministry of Interior mm -hmm. and coordination of national government. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number of issues came up and one of it is uh, the, the, the insecurity in uh, especially students and teachers who have been affected by maybe areas like Lamu, North East, uh, Kibra, where some students, schools were demolished, right. uh, Mao, and uh, they brought a very uh, comprehensive statement, mm -hmm. especially on how they, are, they have secured the schools, mm -hmm. they have moved the students, and how they're ensuring that those particular schools and students affected mm -hmm. make sure they see those exams, mm -hmm. and even the teachers themselves. And, and I'm just trying to look at the statistics that are in regards to the examination centers. Mm -hmm. For KCPE, there will be 27,161 uh, centers. Uh, most of them, of course, they are the schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then for KCSC, there will be 10,077 centers. And those are the ones that you're saying that uh, there will be a container uh, mm -hmm. serving a bunch of them yes. so that they're able to yes, collect yes, papers. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember last year, during the examination season, there were situations where uh, heavy downpour that affected yes, some of yes. them. Uh, areas yes, yes. in the country, we mm -hmm. saw that some teachers and some police officers had to really uh, get rid of their shoes and yes, get into the yes. waters. Uh, what are the logistics uh, that you ha that you've been informed about to ensure that uh, these examination papers arrive on location? Because should they be late or should there be a delay, then it also compromises yes. on the integrity of the examination. Yes, actually, we we really ventilated on that, especially mm -hmm. on heavy downpour and even uh, very arid and even in communicable areas, mm -hmm. uh, areas that are very difficult to reach. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the CS and the, his team uh, assured us that they have even gone to an extent of hiring uh, helicopters and planes to uplift some of these exams to those far-flung areas. Mm -hmm. So with that assurance, we, we could not doubt mm -hmm. that actually she was ready and the, the, for the exams to kick off. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want to say here that uh, we were not able to get representation from the Ministry of Education to be sitting here with us yes. to, so as to explain some of those things that you are saying. Mm -hmm. But uh, nevertheless, we have to continue the discussion. And first of all, uh, when uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Education, Ambassador Amina Mohammed, appeared before you, mm -hmm. she said that uh, if any candidate is caught with um, a mobile phone, yes. then the parents are to take personal responsibility. I don't know whether you are convinced by, by, by that kind of uh, stance because what we know and what we have gotten from the people that we speak to is that uh, you cannot really uh, legally hold a parent responsible uh, for their child having a mobile phone. Just how do they plan to enforce this even as they try uh, to fight uh, any examination cheating? Let me just say this. Uh, before I was a teacher and I was a principal and I, what I know mm -hmm. is that uh, the child can't acquire a phone mm -hmm. on a, without being assisted. Mm -hmm. However, there are certain students or children mm -hmm. who are able to acquire it mm -hmm. just because of their own ways. Of, because now they are teens, they are about 18 years and they can acquire it. But mm -hmm. this in itself is trying actually to be very strict. Mm -hmm. Because if, the, if we'll allow the phones in schools, mm -hmm. these, are, these gadgets are actually having a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And it will actually uh, compromise mm -hmm. the, the integrity of exams. Right. So the fact that the, the parent is held, uh, it will be held responsible is to also put more pressure on the parent mm -hmm. that make sure your child doesn't have a phone and even in case he has, mm -hmm. kindly retrieve it. Yes. And in fact, the, 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 the fact that they have been told not to visit students mm -hmm. is also a point of the role parents could play, mm -hmm. especially in trying to make sure that their children succeed. Mm -hmm. You and I know that when a child succeeds, you will feel uh, good. But That's true. if you allow a child to succeed in, a, in, a, in an unethical way, mm -hmm. it's very wrong. It will never yes. be hard won. Yes, it's not hard won. Uh, 
Right, and, and we have had the situations, and I'm sure you have had to interact with this, that uh, there are allegations that uh, papers are leaking. Mm -hmm. uh, the position of the Ministry of Education is that those are fake papers. Mm -hmm. I remember in the examination season of 2015, uh, the papers were leaking just a day before they mm -hmm. are sat. And I remember the then Cabinet Secretary for Education, uh, Professor Jacob Kaimenya, used to deny every other day. Even the, the NEC officials those days used to deny. How sure are you that the papers that people are accessing um, in some of these uh, centers are fake? And what exactly is being done to ensure uh, that, uh, that they stop circulating? Because obviously, once you hear of papers circulating as a candidate, then it raises your appetite to access that paper. Yes. In 2015, I was a deputy chair of the committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to really thank the, the current uh, CEO and the leadership in NEC. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2015, ev even when we went outside the country, mm -hmm. this country was held with a very low esteem mm -hmm. because it was seen as a country where students could copy exams, mm -hmm. there was no integrity, and mm -hmm. each and every mm -hmm. exam mm -hmm. wasn't taken seriously. Mm -hmm. But after the reforms mm -hmm. that were brought in mm -hmm. in 2016, and the, the, the officers who were actually uh, found to be culpable and uh, who were actually condoning cheating, Right. By that time, mm -hmm. they were sent off, most of them, the CEO, the senior staff in NEC, and everyone else was sent off. Mm -hmm. Two, the Ministry of Education officials even changed the whole system and took their centre managers to be principals, mm -hmm. not the examination officer. So as, we, as I talk to you currently, even the, C, the CEO and everyone else mm -hmm. has taken very stringent measures, and they came before us and were sure does the same thing. So the fact that someone outside there is, is taking and spreading rumors about fake, fake exams, mm -hmm. he might want also to sell as a fake exam so that right. he can get something. Mm -hmm. But in the real sense, I ask, as, a, as members of the committee, we've been even trying to see which exams, which fake papers are these. Mm -hmm. And I think they are in there. And for those who are doing it, we ask even the, the Ministry of Education officials to take, care, to take action right. against them mm -hmm. and arrest these people who peddle exams. I want to take you back to the examination season of the year 2017 mm -hmm. and when the Cabinet Secretary for Education then, Dr. Fred Matiangi, was releasing the results for uh, KCSC, I believe that was on 19th of December, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, yes. uh, he said that at that time there were 700 pending cases of irregularities uh, coming all the way from 2015, 2016 and 2017. And he said that at that time there had been a meeting between the, the Ministry of Officials and the Director of Public Prosecutions mm -hmm. and the Attorney General had already been directed to ensure that all cases had been prosecuted. I don't know that you, you have an update because it's uh, now almost um, 10 months since mm -hmm. that announcement was made by the Cabinet Secretary. Uh, because, and I base this on the argument that uh, you have seen from uh, the regulations of uh, handling this yes. examination, there are those penalties that would accrue uh, mm -hmm. to those persons found culpable. But what have we done? with the 700 cases of irregularities uh, in the previous examinations? I am aware, not, no, I'm not aware of all, but I'm aware of a number of teachers, first of all, mm -hmm. who have been interdicted. They have been going for cases at the Teacher Service Commission. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of uh, inst institutions that are already in court mm -hmm. over exams, mm -hmm. but I don't know the, the various stages where these, uh, the various stages of the cases. Mm -hmm. But a number of teachers have been interdicted, some have been dismissed, mm -hmm. outright dismissed because of their kind of, uh, because of these irregularities. Mm -hmm. But I want to also state that, uh, you know, in the, the court system also has its own timelines and has its own uh, programs. Right. So I cannot uh, put here and say, mm -hmm. we have these cases that have been settled, these mm -hmm. ones have been done, mm -hmm. but I know a number of processes are going on now. Mm -hmm. Yes, But you agree that uh, if the cases are expedited, then it serves a lesson to Yes, the it serves a lesson, and, and I want to tell you that if a country that has a credible exam mm -hmm. is a respected country, and even the citizens, mm -hmm. and even the students, mm -hmm. will learn to be very responsible citizens, especially when they, they know that cheating is illegal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, and uh, we have another threat to yes. the national examination. That threat is uh, what has been stated by the Kenya National Union of Teachers, Secretary General Wilson Susion, and mm -hmm. he sits in your committee mm -hmm. he, since he's also a nominated member of parliament. And that uh, part of threat indicates that uh, they have said that they're going to call a teacher strike should the Teacher Service Commission not heed their demands. And some of those are to do with the promotion of some 30,000 teachers. Uh, I don't know how far that has gone. You chair the Education Committee, 
is. So, of course, this is a matter that mm. would also land uh, at your desk. Yes. How far has that gone? And I wish sure that there will be teachers to manage or administer these examinations. So far, uh, the Kenya National Union of Teachers has not placed mm -hmm. any, any, any petition before us, especially on teacher strike. Mm -hmm. I know the, uh, through papers that they have been in talks mm -hmm. with the Teacher Service Commission. Mm -hmm. I have been in personal talk, contact with the Soshon and asking him, no, this is not the right time right. to really have a, a strike. Is he convinced? It, he, to some extent, because I told him some mm -hmm. of the issues that you, you placed before us, mm -hmm. are, you, you are talking about, he hasn't placed before us, you are mm -hmm. talking about, mm -hmm. can adequately be addressed mm -hmm. by your employer, the Teacher Service Commission and the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I was glad. Right. And he was very much willing to talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think some extent there's some 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 way forward because everyone in the sector is also willing to talk on this issue mm -hmm. so i'm very confident that the strike and uh, cupet right which is actually another union mm -hmm. is in not supporting the strike okay and uh Soshan himself mm -hmm. is also willing to listen Okay. And I believe there will be no strike. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the exams just, will go on well. Just to highlight once again that mm -hmm. uh, the measures that have been taken by the Kenya National Examinations Council, these uh, statements that have been given by the chairperson of NEC, Professor George Magoha, indicating that uh, any school that is found with any incident of cheating will have its examination cancelled in the sense that uh, uh, they will not uh, continue to sit that examination and also they risk the, the move by the Ministry of Education of deregistration. I remember that last year, uh, mm -hmm. one, of, uh, one school was deregistered uh, through the intervention of uh, Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi then after they were involved in, uh, in widespread uh, cheating. So I, I just want to ask you one final question, uh, which is summative, uh, that uh, in your view, these 1.6 uh, candidates in this examination, are you convinced that uh, the examination is safe, that they can sit a proper exam that reflects integrity? Yes, I want to tell Kenyans and I want to really uh, say that we got a very good briefing mm -hmm. from the ministry and from the agency mm -hmm. that the exams is safe, mm -hmm. there is a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. there is a lot of integrity and the, 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 what the students and this country needs mm -hmm. is actually for them to sit. We need the peace, we need the, 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 the schools mm -hmm. to now be ready Mm -hmm. for the big day and I want to wish the students well.